this video, we are going to analyze what are the equations of motion for two different case, cases. The first case is the case when the velocity is changing, is not changing. If the velocity is constant, is not changing, the acceleration should be zero because the acceleration is the measure of the change in the velocity. If it's not changing, V final equal V initial then the final minus the initial should be zero. So the velocity has to be this graph. And if the position is changing at a constant rate, at constant velocity, the graph of the velocity as a function of time is a rectilinear line. So these are the equation for constant velocity. What are the equations with constant acceleration. With constant acceleration, the change in velocity change at a constant rate. So, the change in velocity change at a constant rate. It means that the velocity as a function of time should be a rectilinear line. The acceleration may be positive. It should be some amount different than zero like in this case, is some amount different than zero, and the position is not like this case because now the velocity is changing. If the velocity is changing, the object is capable of doing, of performing more displacement in the same amount of time, then the curve x of t will be distortion and will be curved like this. So the three equations that we have studied for motion with constant acceleration are x of t equal x0 plus v0 t plus a t squared. This is the factor of distortion due to the fact that the velocity is not constant. The second equation is v of t equal v0 plus a t. Then the velocity is changing at a constant rate. And here is the change in the velocity. And, in it, and this is the case when the acceleration is constant. Perfect. We did a problem in class. We repeat the problem. The problem was you launch an object from 100 meters. Uh, you choose the positive axis y in this direction, going up, and you launch the object for a height of 100 meters from 100 meters, and you launch the object going up with a velocity, initial velocity, V0 equal 50 meters per second in the presence of gravitational field. So the object is subject to some kind of acceleration produced by the Earth. And the acceleration is pulling down the object bit by bit, is pulling down. Uh, so, um, so the y of t, the equation are like this, but now we are going to write the equation. Instead of the x, we are going to write the y, because it's logical not to call this uh, axis the x. So we will put the y of t. So at the initial point here, there are two conditions. And before also, what are the two conditions at the initial point? What is the height? What is the slope? What is this slope here? What is the slope of the graph x of t at the point at t equals 0 when y equals 100 meters? So there are always two initial conditions. Con initial conditions are the initial position and the initial velocity. So what are the equations? The equations are this one. If we write the equation correctly and we plug in the numbers, what we will be, let me see, for y of t, for y of t will be y0, 100 plus v by t plus 1 half a minus 10 t squared divided by 2. And if we plug in here the 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 uh, the data that we have of this problem, the velocity uh, respect to time will change like 50 minus 20. 
So these are the two equations. So in any problem that you find with cost and acceleration, my advice is write the equation of motions. If you write the equation of motion, the information is there. So the answer to any question to the problem to, uh, to that the problem can do can can ask you is there. So we wrote the two equations uh, of motion for this particular case when the velocity is positive and when the initial height is 100, and these are the two equations. So now we have to answer this equation. Find the time to arrive to at the maximum height. We did it in class. How we find the time to arrive to the maximum height? We suppose that at the maximum height, the velocity, the final velocity v, will be zero. So if we put, if, if we impose v equals zero here, the equation will read zero equal 50 minus 10 t. And from this equation, we can solve for t, and now we have the time to arrive to the maximum point. What is the question B? Using this time, find the maximum height. What you will do, you already know what is the time to arrive to the maximum height. This equation will tell you, let's say that the maximum height, well, it's easy to see here, is 0, 50 will go to the other side, minus 50 equal minus 10, it will be 50 divided by 10 is 5 seconds. So it's easy, so the time to arrive to the maximum height is 5 seconds. So it's easy to find y of 5. y of 5 is 100 plus 50 by 5 minus 10 by 5 squared divided by 2. If you do this, you will find the maximum height above the 100 meters. Well, the maximum height is not above, the maximum height from the floor, from the floor. Okay, because y is measured from the floor. Okay, then we will obtain the equation of motion. And what are the equation of motion? Well, for v of t, so this is done here. You can stop the video and review what is the maximum height. This is done here, and part c is here, is down here, it say what is the time uh, to, to arrive uh, to the floor. And you are finding the time from the instant that you launch the object upward. So from this time, from this uh, moment, is that you are finding the time. So when the object arrives to the floor, the y is zero, so this equation will allow me to find the t, and once that I have the t, I will plug in the t here, and I will obtain the v. And this is done here. It appears in quadratic equation that we have solved at class. You have two times. You will choose the positive time, uh, because it's the one that makes sense in this problem. And once that you choose the positive time, you will obtain 11.7 as your time. Stop the video and review the calculations. And once that you have the time, you will plug in this time here on the equation for V of T, and you will obtain the velocity at time 11.7 seconds. And the velocity will be minus 67 meters per second. Perfect. You can redo the problem for the case that the initial condition change. Let's say that the initial condition is the same height, y equal one, y zero equal 100 meters. But now the velocity is minus 50 meters per second. So the maximum height <laughs> should be the 100 meters because the object is going downward. Find the velocity when it arrives to the floor and compare this velocity with the velocity in the other case. It will be the same one. It will be different. Mm. Good question. Try to solve. Okay, this is done.